when I was a little girl, six years old, I went down for breakfast and my parents asked me, Julie, what shape do you think the universe is? And it blew my mind. I didn't really feel uh, you know, prepared for breakfast, but it introduced this question that beguiled me. How can we imagine the world? How can the way it's shaped and the way we play around with the way that it's formed as a way to express ourselves or imagine the spaces we're in? And so today I have the pleasure of working for Epic which is uh, producing games and content like Fortnite and Rocket League, but also software like Unreal Engine. And these are different worlds people spend time in, but also gives us insight as creators about the kind of content and tools that we want to give other people so that they can elevate the levels of creativity in the spaces they are in. So it's a unique subset both of creating content and making software for creators by creators. Now, the pace of technology adoption is speeding up. And this is kind of a, a statement I think we can all agree on. But if I was going to show you the graph here, it always uh, surprises me. In 1900 versus you know, 1965, 75, the rate of adopting the telephone had a long journey. And when, when we look at that and compare it to the cell phone, which really rather than 65, 70 years for household adoption was more like seven years, there's quite a change in the world. And that's not just for the telephone, that's for everything. So whether it's the microwave, the VCR, cell phone, or internet, technology adoption has changed and the rate of which adoption is happening is sped up. And this matters because employment will be impacted by this. If you think about agriculture, the amount of labor that was required in the beginning to uh, produce what we have now, it was an entirely different pathway and market required. But as technology was adopted, that changed and did not require as many people and as much employment. Whereas manufacturing is kind of interesting because although um, there was a lot of technology adoption, the amount that we want to consume and produce has also changed. But I'm showing you this because from you know, 1850 to 2015, there's been a certain kind of rate of technology adoption that has impacted employment. But in the next 15 years, because we are adopting technology faster, the kind of employment that's necessary and the speed of which those jobs will change is very hard to predict. And so how do we future-proof our students, our children, ourselves, not just so that we can continue to have a job, but so that they can make an impact. And to me, rather than trying to predict the jobs of the future, which I think will be difficult just because there'll be so much change in these uh, sort of shaping forces, but I look at the kind of skills that could help any, any sector. And to me, visualization and interactivity are those skills. So let's think about visualization and interactivity for a second. These are things that would be inherent to a game engine. They're visualizing a world, but also making it interactive. So 3D interactive or 3D real-time skills, these are all different ways for us to say interactive. Now, what I love about this quote is drawing is thinking. Milton Glaser did not say the pencil is thinking. He said drawing is thinking. So really what we're speaking about is that tools may shape our inquiry, but the kind of thinking that's behind them. So even if we're speaking about a game engine today, we're really talking about visualization and interactivity as the kind of thinking that can be applied as we move forward to make new things or ask different questions. And so uh, I will be mentioning Unreal Engine's uh, tool and this is an amazing tool, super advanced for real-time creation. And it comes from games, Epic Games. But the amazing part is that those skills of visualization and interactivity are far broader. And when we think about um, tools, it's always interesting how uh, where they start and where they end up can be you know, horizons apart and very hard to predict. Once they land in human hands and what we do with them, how we push the tools, 
I think that there is so much that uh, is, is possible. So when you think of the camera, originally it was invented as a tool for documentation. And I know there were a lot of artists that had their feathers ruffled thinking that art is dead, but really it was there to document, this is my child. And the camera was there to document um, newlyweds before someone goes to war. It was there for this kind of um, passport purpose. But it didn't take long before Cartier de Bresson started to use black and white photography and invent his own vernacular for the art. And if you look at the bottom right hand photo, this is a photo taken underwater that looks like a Baroque painting. So when the camera was originally invented, no one would necessarily have thought that it would evolve in these different ways, let alone for photogrammetry, which is essentially a 3D photograph or scan of an object that feels like it's right in front of you. Now, this is where the interact interaction and the interactivity is really important for the visualization because we've had still images for a long time. But having them now be interactive means that we can prototype and experiment and learn so much faster. So an example is, um, you know, in a lot of uh, film, if we're rendering an image for hyperrealism, it could take 24, 30 hours to render something. So as an artist, my creative process uh, is challenging. It would be like learning to play the piano when I can only play one note every 24 hours. My ability to iterate, invent, and learn from my own creative process would have a different kind of feedback loop. Here, with real time, you actually can place this in the environment, twirl it around, get an experience uh, immediately, and know how you want to keep inventing and playing. So if you were gonna say, Julie, if uh, the world is the future of singing, I would be mortified and I would think, oh man, I'm not gonna be able to you know, contribute to that future. So if you don't find that you're a visual person, I wanna say this, you know, we're moving from having to make the visuals to thinking in libraries. And I bet everybody can think in libraries and we're such visual creatures that if you have these assets in our, in our Quixel mega scans, we have 28,000 assets where you can populate a world and start to build that space where you wanna spend time. And this easy way to work with each other and make it visual is uh, you know, a few clicks away. So here's an example of if there was an architect working with a landscape uh, company how you could import your data from the architect and you might have someone else in the community who starts to pick up materials that feel like it represents the kind of concept that they want. And then you might have your landscape architect start to play around with the vegetation. And around the corner might be your urban planner and they start to add people to look at how they walk on the sidewalk and see if there's any kind of patterns to observe and changes to make. And it might be that you add the lights just so you get this feeling for what this will be all year round. So in a few clicks, the kind of communication that we have and the ability to try things out before we're committed to them is unfathomable. And here's another example from uh, MetaHumans. And this is a kind of question where there are a lot of people working on AI, but what is the visual component for AI? And if you can imagine having hyper-realistic MetaHumans, that might be able to teach you a language. They might be able to answer questions about your taxes. They might be able to give you a human component to all the things that we want that now are just in two dimensions on the internet and pages that we're scanning. So imagine what's possible when what you are learning is a place you can go. And it's for this reason that things, uh, many industries have adopted Unreal Engine. Everything from architecture to games, automotive, uh, manufacturing, advertising. And in film and television, you may have heard of something called virtual production. Um, it's very exciting for things like The Mandalorian where we have this LED screen and it is projected with everything from the computer graphics space. So you have an infinite stage and directors can see exactly how actors are working in harmony with what has happened in the computer graphics space. So it opens up a world of whole new storytelling. And this is why in the last three or four years, there's been over 160 films and television um, series made with Unreal Engine. In manufacturing, uh, the adoption is, is of a different sort. 
if you can imagine how expensive it might be to redesign a car or a plant, um, this allows us to design those things, visualize them, but also simulate so that we have that interaction that tells us where there might be gains to be made. So these skills last a lifetime. And in fact, the real-time skills are growing over 600% faster than 3D graphics. And their salary can be over 45% above other entry-level jobs. So these skills not only can enhance industries, but they can actually break cycles of poverty as well. And there are you know, jobs that we don't know yet that will, will pop up, whether it's an experiential designer where we take technology, blending it with physical spaces, and it could be to teach at a museum how dinosaurs come alive. It could be to, um, you know, have an art installation. We are doing a whole series called Unreal Futures, and it's showing how things like careers in advertising or fashion can actually be enhanced by these real-time skills. So we'll post that up in the, in the chat afterwards, but uh, it's something to look forward to. So where do we begin? Because there's a lot that I've just said. And well, there's a few myths that I want to bust first. One is that you need to code to use Unreal Engine. And with Twinmotion, which is what I showed you earlier from an architectural uh, perspective, and this, they have asset packs. So for instance, you have all these objects really that you can move in a very interactive way to assemble the scene. And this is where we become world builders. And you can start to make something very seamlessly with zero programming. And if you think that you or your students uh, need to know C++ to code in Unreal Engine, well, I tried to introduce this idea of visual programming. And here we have different node graphs, different nodes, and you're really using conditional statements. So, uh, you know, one that I use in my house is, if you do the laundry, then I will make dinner. Uh, just this idea that we use conditional statements all the time. And this visual programming allows us to plug that in. If the geometry does this, then this happens. And it means that if we don't have the right semicolon, the whole thing doesn't fall apart. You can actually check back your argument. Myth number three is you need to be an Unreal expert to teach with Unreal. Well, that is not the case. We worked with Eric Elder, who wanted to bring real-time skills to his students, and it was exciting. We gave a lesson plan, which was a museum. So we, you know, thinking that the students could build a museum that represented them in a history that they were invested in or wanted to tell, and more importantly, um, Eric could facilitate by giving them videos to watch, asking them questions about the kind of history that they were looking to research, and then learning the basics of setting up a scene, being able to post materials on the wall, and having their friends actually experience their museum where they can walk around in that space, reading the history, seeing images posted to the wall, was a really incredible way to create an enriching educational experience where Eric was facilitating that and moving this as a shared ground to learn lessons and share them with one another. So we have a number of things that I will go into, but it's the idea that a flipped classroom is a really powerful thing. And you don't have to be an expert to teach Unreal. You really have so many things at your fingertips, which I'll talk about in a second, um, to share with your students and to share with other people who are looking to learn. Everything for education is free. And that means uh, Unreal Engine, Twin Motion, Fortnite Creative, and lesson plans that we put together. But we know that it's a person that makes a difference. And people can be very motivated to learn, but really it's about community. And this uh, quote by Howard Ringel kind of puts it there. Increasingly, community is a part of technology, a driver of technology, and an emergent effect of technology. And it's for that reason that when we're putting together these lesson plans, which might teach game development, we hope that uh, students will make a world for their friends to spend time in, that they'll feel generous in the kind of creation that they have, and that learning starts to feel almost, uh, you know, in the air, but part of something that they are giving other people. And we wanted to map onto Fortnite with Fortnite Creative, which is to say, this is a world that lots of uh, you know, students and youth and kids are spending time in. So what about giving them a sandbox environment where they can use the graphics they're familiar with 
and they can add their own piece. And it can be as, um, you know, their level design can be as sort of simple or as complex as they would like to go. Their friends can collaborate with them and they can travel to other people's worlds to be inspired and see how those worlds and imaginations are flourishing. The lesson plans we're putting together are interdisciplinary so that um, we really can uh, bring an awakeness to other subjects. So whether it's building a Rube Goldberg machine, which can teach students a lot about mechanisms, collisions, not just 3D space, but also about how contraptions work to something like a theme park, which might get them thinking about spatial design and interaction in a different way as well. We have computer science lessons that use Fortnite Creative to think about functions or conditional statements. And these are all skills that will help them in the future and are not dependent on the kind of jobs that are immediately here, but the kind of jobs that will be invented. So we are here to help, and that includes our Epic Mega Grants, which is over $100 million that we give out to all kinds of work. And we recognize that there are some great ideas out there that may just not be getting the funding that they need. So we want to enhance our community and empower them. ArtStation is another great place to uh, learn for free, as well as get as, uh, inspiration. So I go on there to kind of build my map. Wow, look at what that person is doing and find aspirational work and start to figure out how do I get there? And I think that this is a great way for, um, for us all to see the kind of skills that are possible to develop and be inspired by those that are laying the ground. So there's quite a few next steps if you're interested. There is teaching Unreal and Fortnite creative coding lessons that we have. There are emerging careers that I mentioned where we are showing things like uh, advertising and how uh, real-time skills can really change and shape those careers. We have an educator accelerator, accelerator coming on from August 2nd to 6th. And uh, in the conversation after this, we will be answering questions and uh, supplying information about that. We have uh, teaching with Fortnite creative lesson plans, as well as connecting with our community. So you can connect with us on the Discord channel here, as well as after the talk with, um, with the Q&A. And I wanted to leave you with this quote, which is, I want my children to understand the world but not just because the world is fascinating and the human mind is curious. I want, them to, I want them to understand it so that they will be positioned to make it a better place. I love the idea that if we can think visually and create interactions, that we can share the worlds that we want to spend time in, but also be co-creators in the kind of vision that each other have. Thank you.